So we're going to move on to our top five, which was mm. top five anime manga. Mm. Um, and yeah, so looking at my uh, list of movies that I've seen, that I have on letterbox, um, I've seen not a lot, not as many as I thought I had. Um, mm. and, and I was looking at my top five, which I could make a top five, I think. I think I had somewhere between eight and ten titles or something like that, movies. I'd seen a few anime series mm. and I was... I had a, a top five and I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm really not happy with number five. So I swapped that out and cheated a little bit and I, and I threw in a, a, an anime series okay. there. Yeah. I, I've, I've technically done that, I think, um, but we'll get, we'll get to it. We'll mm-hmm. get to it when we get to it. So. Okay, so shall I go first with my series? <clears throat> okay, yeah. my number five is Death Note, the TV series. So, my first introduction to this was the Netflix movie, which was kind of ho-hum, you know, nothing special. Um, one day, I was kind of bored, had a little bit of time to kill. These were quick 20, 25 minute episodes. I thought, you know what, I'll throw one on, see what it's like. And then I threw on another one. This is a complete series that comes in 37 episodes and I watched it in three days. I was hooked. This was a fascinating story. And the best way to describe it is Sherlock Holmes versus Moriarty. It is a battle of minds between these two geniuses and we follow the Moriarty character Mm. all the way through it. And I kind of knew aspects of it, you know, but I, I wasn't prepared for the kind of relationship between Elle and our lead character battling it off with mind games. There's lots of times they have conversations that you would have Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty have. You know that fight they have on Wrecking Back Falls and um, mm. yeah. where they don't do anything but they're battling with minds. There's a couple of scenes mm. like that in here and it's high pressure situations of people trying to outthink each other and um, it's got some stunning visuals. It comes to a concluded storyline which was very fitting and, and kind of sad at the same time lots of characters die in horrible fashions and this is just a a series that is so good it makes it onto my top five anime movies list okay nice one um i'm i'm doing my usual of looking at my list and thinking I feel like I want to swap something round, but um, I'll, I'll I'll leave it as is for now. Uh, I, I, the thing is, I'm all of these films, with the exception of one of them, I've only seen once, and they were pretty long ago. So I am going off purely my memory of, mm. of, of what I felt at the time. Uh, but with that in mind, my number five, like you, I kind of went with a series. Um, it's it's only three episodes, but the, it's, they're really f- films. They're like three short films, about an hour long each. Um, and then when you put them together, they make one whole, so to speak. Mm. And it's called Cyber City Oedo 808. Um this is so j- just after I'd bought the Giver and I was trying to get into manga because it was the cool thing. Um, the, the, Channel Four had started putting manga stuff on late at night. Uh, right. One one of them was this thing called Devil Man that was pretty good. Mm. That came close to making my top five. Um, but one that connected with me, and I'm not sure it's that great to be honest. Like I said, it's been so. It's been. I've not seen it since the 90s. Uh, but so Cyber City Oedo. It's these three stories. So these three criminals are essentially given the Suicide Squad treatment. So you, you know, you go out, you do mission. You each do a mission for us, and if you do the mission, you get time off your sentence. So there's um, this this kind of cool dude guy who's like the leader of the three there's this uh proper kind of bebop and rock steady looking dude with this mohican who's right. like 
proper into rock and stuff like that, heavy metal kind of dude. Uh, and then there's this transvestite guy. Um, so each each film is a, is, a, is a different type of story. So one is like um, about... So, so the main guy goes up against this... AI, this artificial intelligence, and it's it turns out to be this this guy who's part of a machine, and it's 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 got some really cool visuals in it. Then the uh, the the Bebop's rock steady dude, he goes up against this cyborg, um, and then the transvestite dude goes up. He, he's in a, he's in a vampire story in outer space. Uh, it, he ends up going in outer space. It's a vampire story. So yeah. It, um, so each each one, you, you see them do their mission and complete it and get time off the sentence. And then obviously when you when you put them together, it, it's almost like one long film that's been split up. But uh, I just I just remember liking it at the time. I just thought it was a cool idea. I thought they were cool characters, and it's something where I would have liked to have seen more from it. Mm. The you know from that world and that. Whether it holds up today, I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Uh, I'm going purely off my memory of. 20 years ago so yeah um but there you go cyber city oedo yeah um, my next one is probably the most i'd say famous anime movie out there uh, ghost in the shell okay um we recently had the, the live action adaptation but the original movie was um only something that i i watched for the first time last year after i'd seen mm. the movie and oh. um it, it was fantastic such a, an interesting idea of, of this strange uh, future, this cybernetic policewoman type thing that, that could turn invisible, hunting down this um, strange uh, artificial intelligence bad thing, and it's just so much, uh, so much of it you can see has been taken from certain things, like especially with the Matrix we were talking about um, last episode you know you can see lots of our main character and trinity and um, with yeah. the things that she does it's something that even people that don't watch anime that haven't heard of it it's prominent for them it's a quick snappy tale it's exciting it's visually stylish and unlike akira it is coherent and you can mm. tell what's happening from start to finish um, yeah you know i particularly like the scene where she's uh, swimming you know, or, or when she gets created at the start, or the whole body being mm. created is just one of these like fascinating ideas. You get the, the story right from start to beginning, and yeah. um, you know I've seen a few anime. Some of them can be completely all over the place, like Akira. Some of them are just nailed exactly what they were meant to be. This is it. Okay. Uh, my number four is Perfect Blue. Uh, it is a film about a retired pop star who's becoming an actress and she is she has a stalker um i won't say much more than that other than it's very hitchcockian mm. if hitchcock made a anime it would look very much like this um, i remember it being very psychologically dark challenging and just pretty well made uh yeah, it goes to some some places that you don't really expect from animation. Uh, you know, when like when I saw it, it was it's, I hadn't really seen many manga or anime, and and so seeing this and just how full on it is mm. with some of the sexual stuff in it, it was like okay. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's it's like when you kind of look at it and you realize oh. This stuff ain't for kids. These are these like proper movies mm. that that they're making here. They just happen to be animated. Um, so yeah, Perfect Blue, really good kind of non Hitchcock Hitchcock film. Yeah, um, my number three is Perfect Blue, <laughs> which is it's unlike any other anime I've seen. It is one hundred percent an adult psychological thriller. Um, from start to finish uh, and it has this character at the heart of it who uh, is going through a lot of stuff and you get to see every facet of this and it isn't the sugar coated um, or fantastical type of anime that you're used to this is down and dirty and vicious uh, and um, 
you know, the breaking of a person through stalkers, how it affects them, you know, mm-hmm. and I I just wasn't prepared f- for how good this movie was going to be. You know, you stick on an anime, you're expecting a kind of certain level of entertainment and enjoyment, but not something to give you a real kick, which this movie does. Um, just mm-hmm. grabs a hold of you and shakes you. It's stunning and I don't understand in, in this day and age where everything gets remade why this hasn't had a live action adaptation because it, mm. it could quite easily be done yeah yeah it's just yeah. it's surprise. pretty straightforward isn't it and um, mm. i think you can match it shot for shot with yeah. the way it's framed and things and you'd make a really great movie mm-hmm. uh i think obviously purists would probably have something to say about that but yeah, uh, my number three is, and, and I think these count. Uh, I mean, my definition of what constitutes anime and what constitutes manga may be somewhat limited because I'm, you know, I'm not a huge buff on these kind of movies. But I think Princess Mononoke counts. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume it does. Yeah, it's Jap- Japanese animation. It's, you know, it's. Very particular kind of style, but uh, yeah. So the Miyazaki stuff, I, I, I assume, is part of that whole anime thing. Um, Princess Mononoke, yeah, I, a film that I watched the British version of it simply because um, Gillian Anderson did a voice to it, and yeah, way back when when I saw it, I, I was just really big on Gillian Anderson, so I'd watch anything with her in, even if it was an animated film. And it's fantastic. It's like dark Disney. You know, it's a proper fairy tale story with tree creatures and strange wild pig beasts and yeah, crazy big white dogs and it's 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 what would happen if Disney went really dark, um and and yeah, just full on twisted. Um but it's got a, a real sense of beauty about it as well. The animation's incredible, as you would expect from a Miyazaki film. Uh, and it's I, I, what, from what I've seen of Miyazaki, of, of, of uh, Studio Ghibli, uh, it, it's it's one of their best. Right. Um, th- that's Studio Ghibli is one of these things that I have been meaning to get into. Mm. Um, and I've, I've picked up a couple of their titles, I've just never got round to, to watching them as yet. Um, I'm waiting for, I think I want to be in the right mood to stick it on, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. You get that with certain movies that you want to wait to the right time, so I, I will get to them at some point, but not as yet. Um, my number two is Your Name. Um, again, this is a movie I saw, I think it was last year, maybe the year yeah. before, and it's one of these tales that kind of lures you in with its simplicity. Um, it's basically a body swap comedy. Um, and that's exactly how it starts off. doesn't explain it. Just you get these two individuals who are uh, swapping bodies. You know, um, a, a girl and a, and a guy. One living in the city, one living in the sticks. And they wake up one day and they'll have swapped places. And they start to get into a routine of, of what to do. Like leaving notes for each other so that they don't mess up things in their life. And, and just continuing as if um, they were that person. And you're kind of laughing along and you're having fun with it and it's it's kind of free-flowing and easy-going. And then before you know it, this thing just pulls the rug from under your feet with a, a strange happening, something that happens, and then you suddenly realise how emotionally invested you are in these characters and it becomes something that is desperate to get to the conclusion hopefully gets to that happy conclusion you're you're willing it you want it to get there and you are fully invested in this movie that came out of nowhere and just sucker punched you the kind of whimsical nature but this emotionally resonant story that is absolutely wonderful so if anybody hasn't seen your name you need to check it out Hmm. okay I've heard a lot about your name that that it's you know it is supposed to be pretty uh, gut wrenching and whatnot. But um, okay, my number two is Spirited Away, mm. which again 
another Miyazaki film. For, for, for my money, the best Miyazaki film that I've seen. Uh, admittedly, I've not seen them all, not even close. But uh, yeah, Spirited Away, re really, really loved it. Just kind of like Alice in Wonderland, just slightly more... If, if 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 that's possible, a bit a bit more weird. Um, I, I, well, I don't know. It's just just a different kind of weird, I guess. Uh, Alice in Wonderland through the eyes of Japanese filmmakers. Uh, so, yeah, re really good film. Again, beautiful moments, wonderful animation, uh, crazy creature designs, and a central story around this child, this this young girl that you get invested in. Uh, a, a character that you know you root for, unlike Tetsuo. Mm. So, spirited yeah. away. Um, my number one is the Red Turtle. This is a phenomenal movie, and was very high up in my top ten movies of the year. The year I remember when we did our top ten <coughs> last year, it made your top ten. Yeah. Um, this is a phenomenal movie and it's I, I like to call it a universal movie because there, nobody speaks in it so anybody can, can watch this thing and it's basically about a man who gets stranded on an island and there is a red turtle there that kind of keeps him there doesn't allow them off the island and things transpire and it's basically a story about the environment, you know, man's relationship with that and if he's good to it, it'll provide everything he needs uh, and, uh, you know, it's simpatico, everything working together. It is stunningly uh, done visual style. The, the the sound recording is amazing because it's all done with these weird um, sound mixtures because there's no vocals whatsoever. And it's one of these tales that I've watched several times and I just love it. I get more and more out of it every time. It's really affecting, it's fun it's devastating it's everything in this one story and hopefully you're going to tell me you've seen this yet Brian <sighs> that, that, that's that's a hard one to take this is a, a stunning movie were you hoping it was going to be my number one then I was, yeah, I was just hoping you would have seen it I don't care uh, where you put it just seen yeah. it I want more people to see it yeah I've, I've not I've not seen it um, so just before I give my number one, I will say three honourable mentions that didn't quite make the cut were Blood, The Last Vampire, which is pretty decent, uh, Ghost in the Shell, which I really like, although I find the ending to be a bit ponderous and I prefer the ending to the live action film. <laughs> sure people will hate me for that, but hey ho, it's just the way, just the way I feel. <clears throat> and Ninja Scroll, which is kind of a, a samurai, mystical warriors, kind of all action blood fest. So it, yeah, really good kind of solid film that just missed out and probably is a better film than 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 Cyber City Oedo, but for whatever reason I had some affections because of my memories of, of that one. So yeah, my number one choice is a film called um, Wings of the Honey Amis, or the Honey Amise, uh, is I think you may, probably how you pronounce it. Uh, it was it, it, it came out in 1987, a year before Akira, and at that time it was the most expensive anime that had ever been produced. Um, and I just get sucked up in the story. I've only seen it once. It's never been released here. It came. It, it played on TV late one night over here, <coughs> but it's never been released on DVD here or Blu-ray. So it, it's it's a film I'd love to get my hands on. Um, and I just remember it. It, sp it just really spoke to me. Um, so it follows this guy who is desperate to get up into space. So he's, he's, he's become an astronaut, he's in a space program, um, and his, his end goal is, is just, he, he wants to get into space. He's dreamed of being an astronaut ever since he was a kid. He's always wanted to be a part of this Royal Space Force, and he, he's, it's, it's all that matters to him. Uh, 
there's a lot going on on Earth. Uh, you know, like a lot of political tensions, environmental issues, things like that. And while he's caught up in this space program, he meets this woman who's handing out leaflets in the street. Um, she, she's essentially the Japanese equivalent of a Bible thumper, I guess. She's you know she's trying to trying to tell people about God and how how we should. Be looking after this planet rather than getting off it to do flights of fancy and he's kind of like poo-pooing her and he's all like you know what not for me um like they, they he's kind of friendly with her and they build some kind of relationship but he's just he's still focused on space and well i, I won't say any more than that uh just because i like the ending for me was really powerful uh on an emotional level spiritual level uh and it's just it was just brilliant writing and it, again it's that thing of telling a, co- a cohesive story in which you know you, you, you're you never lost you know exactly where you are because the writer the director is doing a, a good job of it and and they've given you characters that you can give a toss about so yeah uh wings of the honey i'm easy Brilliant film. I would really love to see it again. So if anybody could track it down, I I would love a copy. (laughs) 